one stifle smoking weed with the dead. Yeah. So when the war high on waves and marks asked me what I was going to present my thesis on, I saw from the smoke that passively engulfed my thoughts in a lonely voice that screamed in a whisper. It's my story. Can I hear you right here? Glossy eyes turned towards me in a cold room full of water droplets in midair and for the more dignified some wine. But I pulled myself out a glass of whiskey and nodded at the audience that beheld that freezing okay. hotel room where the attic was haunted with beauty. One guy stumbled and stared, another indifferently blew smoke rings into the air. Like a single perfect one in several boxes of donuts with the white hollow and the white shame and who did I forget? Oh okay, yeah, the sweet satisfaction prevailing in confidence. What's the use? asked another voice. Whose uh, who owner was rolling a joint on a marble top like tonight. Standing on a bed meant to be slept in. And chasing a trail of mosquitoes, actually, you know, with a good deodorant and a light in his pocket. Is really something to be dead? Then I'm not going to see it. I have seen a white amorphous take the form of death, spread its wings, and cram down large holes in search of some place to live. It's important to remember the dead. It's important. It's important to remember so and smile for the lovely memories of dead friends lost in road accidents and grandparents who lost in a battle in which cancer won and of random strangers jumping off the flyover in search of a bloody end. I wanted to make those people in my memory and show them the direction of the wind and later collect all the lost stray particles from when I couldn't get my brain to remember those moments and save them in the heart of a Polaroid camera. That which gives me instant pictures of love and momentary joy. I shall take these pictures and I shall pin them up on the concrete exterior walls of my crematorium. Only waiting for its wings to take shape again. For these are only the first few copies of my failures to find. You know why? Because I will find the real ones away, prim and proper, in the cavity between these walls, where there lies the void, like the still more genius of an undermined teenager or the emotional paintings of a hard-broken woman who Disney so promises you'll find someday but just can't find it. It is important to remember I need my own building's janitor and scour every crack for any drop of tear, any hint of a smile and dreams of what I was and who I will be and save it. To carry childhood in a return basket and show up at the doorstep of the ex little child of me who opened the door to every stranger, who smiled at everybody and who in thanks to house the house. I will take a magic butterfly net and trap all the way with this huh? within me that I've tackled and sued and oh, so far. Yeah. That which hold the pulse from the present and my breath from the past. I take all the blood from all my blue sleeves and colors from all the imaginary trips that I've had in valleys, whether it's flowers smell like tea, and that which look as translucent as the red bottle of absolute vodka. I'm sure all of you know about that. Now, what I will do, I take all of this and put it in an urn and see it burn until I can no longer tell the past from the recent past or future from the speculative present. I want to do just that. I shove it hot and fury, white out and swallow it all over again to feel the warmth of who I was, to sustain who I am now. That I'm all of that put together. And none of the words that I used to describe myself in portfolios and resumes as I wait in an air-conditioned lobby, waiting for a job so that I can work my ass off endlessly for the next couple of years to come to design skyscrapers and convention centers, little fancy homes and all those art centers where ideas never meet as much as aliens never smile during like Sunday morning church service. All I want to do is design crematoriums. That which give people back who they are, their identities, their love, and their own love and everybody close to them. Packaged in white little ash packets, burping contentment, and smoking hollow stars for a change, smoking weed with the dead. Two or three years back, I met with this incredible poet uh, who had come to judge a poetry slam competition I'd been attending. I was charmed with the extensive views of herself and her poetry, and I met with her post even. Now, it was amazing talking to her, and it was time to depart. She left with me her visiting card. I was very enchanted by that card because it was a white card, a very faint card. It had her name, it had her phone number, and it had a single line for a description which said, 
I write and I perform poems. I kept looking at the car until I got back home that day. The car still stays in mm -hmm. my wallet. I pick it up and I look at it now and then and I wonder if I will ever be so successful that a single line is enough to describe who I am and what I do. And if it is all the more something that I love doing, something I'm completely passionate about. You know, when I tried to bring down my list of who I am, I was scared. I probably had a body for I mean, I just can't put them all down. And so what I did, I wanted to see if I can narrow down to who I am in a sentence. So what I suggest all of you guys do here for the next two minutes is draw three columns, right? Three columns. One first column would be who you are right now, the identities that you see. Second one was who you were. And third, who you will be, right? So this is what I did. I drew these columns and I wrote back and forth what I was. You know, I was many things back then. I was a gymnast, an athlete, a teenager, very thin girl, by the way. Um, I was a person who was just getting into the bounds of anti chauvinism and you know those movements. A little of a writer, a charismatic vocalist, and it seemed like a significant list. I realized that after I grew up, these identities began to crumble and fall down. I became an ex-gymnast, an ex-athlete, fat, an adult, more leaning to more towards feminism, and many seemingly insignificant ones like a dog lover or a stargazer or a bathroom singer. I know half of you guys are, okay? Admit So, and then I saw what was the one that constantly stuck with me. You, you know the causes that you put down, you know there is something that's const constantly there with you. And what stuck with me constantly throughout this entire journey has been my writing and my artwork. I wonder if it is because I've grown older that I've begun to appreciate poetry or anything of that sort, but then no, I, I, came to, I could you know, deduce the fact that age never plays any part in poetry. It's almost as if you say that the person is blue or something. Right? So, I, I put these down and I could virtually see myself go with this poetry. I could see myself go with my artwork. And I was very happy and I was very content with that. So, at a point, um, I started um, I, I started thinking, where did this whole poetry mm -hmm. thing start over? My first book poetry goes mm -hmm. way back when I was young. And uh, it came, like, I yeah, remember this particular thing when I brought my cycle to a screeching oh, point so that I could run over a caterpillar. Okay. I don't remember okay. anything else, but I can see that girl I was mm -hmm. in a boy style, shorts, sleeveless t-shirt, and uh, a cycle too big for my size, standing and wondering, where is this caterpillar going? But its size, how does it even know where its house is going? I mean, it's just going around. I don't remember any part of the poetry that I wrote that day, but I remember the need that I felt to put it down in words and understand what I was going through. Because I was being a creator and I loved every minute of it. Of course, right now I've come a long way from just caterpillars and stars, but I read more about uh, love, yes, as cliche as it may sound. It has been uh, one of my favorite areas of uh, writing. I used to write love poems way before I was even a teenager and I used to show them with immense pride to my first critique, my father. I'm really sorry, Abba. It must have freaked you out, 10 year old coming to you and saying, hey daddy, how's my love poem? But yeah, I feel that love then was underrated and now it is exponentially overrated. So I must just limit myself to finding the string of boys that I've been fixated upon at various points in time and the problem one that I fell in love with, it depends. Whomso is watching, guys, come on. <laughs> and yeah, at the end of the day, even if there's no boyfriend or anything, there's more poetry, and I think that compensates for everything else. The other most favorite area of research, wind, writing, how we call it, is shortness. Um, shortness people are a great source of inspiration to me. I just, my mother thinks I'm an angry young woman for most parts of it, like Amitabh Bachchan's movies, you know. Just that young, shorter, half a side, no beard, girl. But. Uh, <laughs> She, 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 don't trust her, basically. I'm just a little proactive about certain issues and I think women need to be treated the way they need to be. And that's just not happening in this country at the point of time and I wish that changes. So I write a lot of anti-chauvinist, feminist, however you wish to see it, articles and poetry about my blog. And uh, I've had mixed responses, random people uh, coming back and saying, hey, I agree with you on this one, I, I really feel this. And you know, this happened to me as well. And I've had this totally other extreme of people say, 
Why do you wish to destroy the tradition of India? Why do you want to wear shots? Why do you want to equate men and women? I've always enjoyed replying to every single one of them with immense interest, you know. If I can even drive down one point back into their heads, I'm happy. I'm done for that day. I've achieved something. And then I wondered if, when, when did I become uh, anti this feminist? And then I went back to all my old artwork and... Okay, I'm not getting this. But, okay, so I went back to all my old artwork and... And I noticed all the, yeah, this is from when I was in my third grade. Uh, you can just very slightly see what the girls are like. This, what happened later on, yeah, the next one. This was when I was, this is in 2004 if I'm not mistaken. And the ones up, the ones to follow. Um, yeah, this one. And the next one. These are what I produce now, and I realize that there has actually been a transition from who I was and who I am right now. And it has immensely helped me. And person is not confined to just being creative. Do it with your assignment papers, I tell you. You know what I do? I write little lines of poetry in my assignment papers. No stuff is ever found out till then. Either they really like the poetry, or they just don't care. They don't see my sheets. What I was telling them, even when it comes to an academic paper, you can drive out the boredom and Enjoy a little more on that. I know we live in India, it's a country where you cannot afford to be full-time performers or artists. There's this pattern that, you know, there are these people who major in something that they are good at and they have a completely other side which they are passionate about. You know, I had a huge flair, I still have a huge flair for flunking in math physics, chemistry, or computer science. So, <laughs> I decided to chug that up and I went to architecture, which is my passion. And I'm a final year student right now, it's not any different from poetry actually. But I digress as, I, as my words go. All I wanted to tell you is that you have to do what you want to do, what your bones crave to do. Because at the end of the day, I realize that with every rung of education that we're stepping onto, our scope is not going, you know, broader. It's narrowing down. And you're out of here like a horse, you know. You just stop seeing the outside world. And you reach the end of the race and you realize there are a hundred other wags there, exactly similar. You don't know which one you will take first. What's the point? I know mean, your GRE exams are sometime in the coming week, coming month, coming year, whatever. But I ask you, I request you to take time to do what you want to do, what you love to do, what you're passionate about, because that's what brings the best out of you. Because honestly, I never thought I would be here. But I am here. It's a very nervous experience, my legs are shaking. And it's also an exhilarating experience. I'm loving it. So yeah, go out your dreams, chase them, do what your bones crave to do, and mm. be many more. I'd like to end with one of my initial poems that I've always enjoyed performing. It's the Angry Young Woman Pumpkin. I'm, I'm not you. always angry and young and woman, whatever, but if you can give me any of you guys, give me a bar of white chocolate and I'm capable of being the sweetest person you know. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, this one is titled The One Who Slut. Mm. You call her a slut, mm. you call her a whore, but that is all that you wish to see and nothing more. For within every woman, slut or not lies a very small butterfly, waiting for the colors of her wings to show out as beautiful as it is. But all that you wish to see, all that you are accustomed to and trained to see, is a garbage display of hues. Do you feel me? Right? Guys? No? Okay. You see, sluts or prostitutes, as you see and tag, also gives out her blood as milk through breasts whose suppleness is all that you notice. I see the mother, and you see the slut. I wonder the ease with which words flow from your mouth as your eyes trace the figure of a woman confident, and in words of her own independence. And I can see sheer insecurity, fuming with hypocrisy and vain games, culminating into a giant big slayer of drunken rashness, which is almost always dismissed for a list in this country. I ask you, do you care to see the insecurity of a girl who misses her father's hug? Or the nervousness that a 22 year old feels as the secret glances of the boys follows the wind raising her nervousness? You see, a slut, a prostitute, and nothing more. But there is more to this person than that you actually see. You see a woman, a slut, with a woman of feature with blood between her legs and smirk with disgust, twisting your face this way and that, falling on no possible lines of respect. I ask you, you care to see 
seen that bloody pouch that she has been imbibed with, waiting to carry you, being far beyond her capacity. Someone who could even get her, kill me, blow her with every bone in her body, before it even reaches this goddamn planet. Do you know that? You see the women on the road, on your front porch, seeking explanations for the stairs for who she is. Why hormonal imbalances are being placed and the talent weighing on her shoulders. Why a little of her skin is your skin, and all that you have to say in reply is, Damn! You freaking whore. How long before you realize that the whore you call is a woman too? With blood, flesh, bones, and all that define her physically as only an anatomy different from a man. With a heart, a womb, laughter, tears, and many unseen that prevails even during the darkness of the day. How long before you realize that this woman that you see loves herself? She lives her life and she loves herself more than the wife which you assume to judge her by the hip that swings and stilettos that she may wear in a manner befitting her or not. She may leave her hair loose for the wind to play between its fibrous scraps. She may line her eyes with coal that is as, as dark as your ignorance. And she will slap you right across your face if you throw words at her that do not belong to her. And if all of this makes her a slut, a whore, a slut she is, a wondrous one.